Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another post fight analysis video. All right, y'all. Tabitha Ricci versus Maria Oliveira. All right, y'all. This is uh, this is almost like Tabitha Ricci, her official debut. You know, she's at the rightful weight at 115. As y'all know, her UFC debut was against Manon Firo. And we all remember how that fight went, right? At 125. You know, we don't even need to bring that up. But uh, yeah, man, Tabitha Ricci, she was in there against uh, Maria Oliveira. A fighter that was much more tailor made for, you know, a stand up fighter, a tall, long, stand-up fighter but um maria Oliveira, you know she's more of a muay thai fighter and um i don't think she's really transitioned her muay thai skills over to mma that well yet you know she still needs to work on her footwork and work on utilizing that reach you know that's why i always say like that's why i always think to myself now like i can't really call like an eight inch reach advantage for cer certain fighters you know it's just a eight inch uh, reach difference now you know because if you're a long tall fighter and you don't know how to use that reach. You don't know how to fight like a long, tall fighter and, you know, keep fighters on the end of that uh, front push kick or the end of that long jab. Then it's not really it's not really an advantage for you. You know, it's not an advantage. So, you know, going into this fight here, you had a tall, long fighter in um, Maria Oliveira, but she didn't really know how to utilize her lateral movement here. You know, she wasn't sticking the jab in the shorter fighter's face because Tabitha Ricci, you know, she's a solid judoka, you know, black belt in judo uh, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She's a good grappler, solid on the ground, but uh, her striking is still in development. That's why I used to say when I saw her in LFA, I said, okay, she needs to be moved along, move, moved along nicely because right now her ground game is good, but her striking is still something she needs to work on. Even in this fight, you can see some holes in uh, Tabitha Ricci's striking game. The thing that made it look good as far as her, her right hand landing was her opponent was standing in front of her. You know, Oliveira never really knew how to be in and out. You know, when Oliveira would land shots, she would still be standing in the pocket. So, rep. Uh, Tabitha Ricci didn't have any trouble landing. You know, she didn't have any trouble closing the distance because Oliveira was meeting her halfway. So um, when you look at the styles here, this was sort of tailor-made for uh, Tabitha Ricci. So Tabitha Ricci was able to land a few strikes. Uh, she got hit a few times in this fight, but she was able to do what she wanted on the ground. But overall, I was surprised that, you know, she she wasn't able to get the submission over Oliveira. You know, that just shows you that Oliveira did have some good uh, techniques as far as escaping. And, you know, just kind of um, nullifying the attempts from Tabitha Ricci and getting back to her feet. Uh, her survival skills were on point. We can say that her survival skills were on point. Uh, she just wasn't able to get her uh, get her jab going. You know, she continued to let Tabitha Ricci put the pressure on her and land those right hands on the inside. And um, Tabitha Ricci won the fight, you know, against an opponent that was just, like I said, Taylor made for. Her. Um, going back and looking at the first round, Tabitha Ricci closed the distance right away. You know, swinging those wild right hands and rushing in on Oliveira. You know, Oliveira was picking her shots early on. You know, she was landing some good straight straight strikes, but like I said, not using her footwork. So she eats a big right hand from Tabitha Ricci because she lands a few shots, doesn't move. Tabitha Ricci closes that distance, and boom, she catches her with the right hand, and Ricci clinches up. So Oliveira, you know, she's landing but not putting enough on her shots. You know, she's not using the range. Uh, she's fending off a few of these takedowns, but still she's standing in front of standing in front of Ricci. So when she throws a, a side kick, Ricci catches it, takes it down to the ground. It was only like 30 seconds left in the in the round, but um, you know, it still counts. So Ricci, I think she won that round. Now, if um if uh Oliver was able to survive that takedown and maybe put them, put together a few more shots and just move side to side, Oliver could have won that round. But uh the pressure and the takedown definitely um uh, definitely won uh, Ricci that round. Um, the second round, Oliveira not using the range again, you know, not being assertive with these punches, you know, a few good leg kicks land, you know, she's not putting enough shot. She's not putting enough um, pop on these shots. So Ricci, she gets another takedown, gets the full mount, works a few elbows, lands some big shots. Um, Oliveira makes it back up. But even in the stand up, you know, I think Oliveira, she's getting the better of these strikes because when Tabitha Ricci steps in, she is eating shots to the nose. You can see the nose starting to get a little bit red. She is getting picked up. Um, not picked off, but she is uh, she is getting hit, you know, because I would say she was getting picked apart. But that's only if she's continuing to stay on the outside, but not in this situation here. You know, she's taking a few shots, but she's willing to step in because Oliver is there to be um, to be taken down. And what happens again? Oliver, after landing a few strikes, she walks right into another takedown. So pressure again and another takedown, uh, another couple of takedowns wins uh, Tabitha Ricci around uh, third round. Oliver. Trying to put the pressure on here now. She's landing a few of these long strikes and kicks, but Ricci again gets her takedown because she walks right into it. You know, I, I know Oliver wants to uh, turn it up now. She knows it's over. She needs to finish, but still not being smart. You know, she's stepping right in at mid range and Tabitha Ricci gets her down again. 
Uh, Oliveira, she's good at getting up, so I can give her that. You know, she's good at getting up, but Richie, she picks her up again, takes her down once more. So there's like five takedowns already in this fight, and uh, Maria Oliveira is just not defending well. You know, she's not even able to transition these positions. She's able to squirm out, but again, Tabitha Ricci, she finishes on top. So 30-27, Tabitha Ricci won this fight. Again, Tabitha Ricci did well with her, her strength and her pressure. But she got hit with a lot of shots here. She was just dealing with a much, you know, lighter striker here versus the Manon Firo. So everything that was happening when I went back and looked at the fight again was happening the same way at 125. The thing is, she was dealing with a bigger, stronger, polished stand-up fighter. You know, um, in this fight here, she could walk through a lot of these shots. You know, she took some shots from Oliveira, but she could walk through them because she was dealing with a fighter that didn't have the footwork and didn't really know how to... Uh, didn't really know how to move out of the way of these takedown attempts, you know, and didn't have the strength. Uh, but overall, I think Tabitha Reese, you know, she's a solid grappler. She just has to work on her hands a little bit more. Uh, she can't rush in like this against some of these top level strikers, you know, the Lamoses as she gets higher, even the Loma Labugnies, uh, even Cheyenne Bays, you know, you can't, can't even Sam Hughes, you know, these type of these type of strikers that know how to use their range and pop these jabs off, you know, like Sam Hughes, like I said, uh, I think they, they could pick her apart. You know, so what's next for Tabitha Ricci? Yeah, I'd like to see her tested. I'd like to see them make this fight. Two former LFA fighters, you know, Sam Hughes versus Tabitha Ricci would be a good fight. Um, yeah, that would be good. Or like I said, maybe like a crazy style matchup would be Conejo Ruiz versus Tabitha Ricci. See how uh, this grappler, you know, jiu-jitsu practitioner and judoka could deal with this uh, wrestler slash grappler. You know, that would be kind of a wild style clash up. You know, it'd be, you know, it'd be a ground fight, but it would be rough and rugged. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to see her deal with, like, another polished strawweight striker in uh, Sam Hughes. That would be a good fight. Uh, as for Maria Oliveira, man, she's got work to do, man. She's got work to do. Like I said, she has to transition that Muay Thai style into a um, striker in mixed martial arts now. You know, you can take a little elements here and there, but you can't have that type of stance and that type of footwork from Muay Thai in MMA. You know, you have to be a little bit more nimble bounce around the balls of your feet keep that range well and keep the legs loose you know she just seemed a little too stiff at times you know just throwing one twos and staying right in front of her opponent you know so Tabitha Ricci didn't have any trouble closing that distance and getting her down so yeah man let me know in the comment section what y'all want to see here from um the winner of this fight Tabitha Ricci combo breaker 99 I'm out subscribe peace